Good morning, uh, everybody, and welcome once again to our final Together for Christ daily podcast uh, for this week. Today, Saturday, the 6th of March. My name's Colin McLeod, along with Stuart Smith. Uh, we both minister in the area here. We are bringing to you every Monday to Saturday a, a reading from the Bible, a reflection on that reading, and a short prayer. We, here we are on Saturday. Today, I'll be reading Romans chapter 7 and verses 7 down to verse 25. And uh, the um, passage in the NIV, the heading in the passage is the law and sin, or struggling with sin. This is a very difficult passage. It's a very complex passage, I think. Um, But we'll uh, make our way through it and hopefully glean some lessons for today and for the rest of our lives, which will be of some help to us. Before we look at the passage, shall we commit the time to the Lord in prayer? Loving God and Heavenly Father, without you we can do nothing. Even as born again and possessing the Holy Spirit of God, we still need you to to do a work in us, to open our eyes, to see and our ears, to hear your word. Your word is deep. Your word is um, profound. Your word is very complex, more so in some places than in others. And yet we thank you, Lord, that your word is clear. Your word is obvious. Your word is evident. The message of the gospel is plain for us to see. Unpacking it is another thing altogether. But we thank you, Lord, that you have given us clarity to understand that God so loved the world that he gave us one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And may we grasp that and hold on to that truth um, as the only hope that we have in life and for eternity as well. Father, as we turn to today's passage, will you give to us understanding and help us to follow Paul's mind and to to, uh, grasp the uh, train of thought that you were putting into his mind. We know that all scripture is given for a purpose, and you give it with a message in mind. May we find that message and apply it to our own hearts as well. Thank you for your kindness to us, for your grace and your goodness in every way, not least in our salvation, but in giving us what is good and what is gracious. Please breathe new life into our hearts today and into our homes. Speak to us clearly. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Romans chapter 7, verses 7 and down to verse 25. What shall we then say, Paul says? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of coveting. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me. And through the commandment, it put me to death. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. Did that which was good then become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it used what is good to bring about my death, so that through the commandment, sin might be utterly become utterly sinful. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I don't want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself, I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, 
but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I don't want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I don't want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So, I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there, there with me. For in my inner being I delight in the, in the law of God and in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I do pray that the Lord will bless that reading of the Bible uh, to us. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verses 7 to 25, is a very, very complicated uh, passage of the Bible. It's really hard to, I think, get into Paul's mind and what he was well, what he was ultimately trying to convey. Much has been written about this passage. Many commentators have commented on this passage. Much disagreement has arisen because, uh, over the meaning of the passage. Um, and even, to be honest, when I was looking at uh, this passage for today's devotion, uh, it was, I was finding myself going from one uh, opinion to another. Is this Paul speaking before he became a Christian? Um, because he talks about, I know that I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. A Christian is not unspiritual. A Christian is spiritual. We have the Holy Spirit of God in us. Um, is this him as a Christian struggling and wrestling with sin? Some would say, well, it can't be because of such and such. Um, I think it probably is because, amongst other things, um, and I think if you're a Christian, you'll, uh, you'll understand this, you kind of see where Paul is coming from. In, in some of what he says, the, can, the inner turmoil that we can be uh, going through uh, as a believer in Jesus with sin that dwells within. We do know, though, that there are four things, that are, and I want to bring this to our attention today, four things about uh, that Paul does bring to our attention about the law, and the, the law has been a big picture, a big issue in, the, in, the, in his thinking here, what the law does in our lives. The first thing is this, he says, the law exposes my sin in verse 7. What then shall we say? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would never have known what sin was had it not been for the law. Uh, for I would not have known what coveting was if the law had said, you shall not covet. So, one thing's for sure, uh, the law exposes sin, sin within us, wrongdoing in our hearts. Um, and he asks the question, is the law sinful because, of the, because it exposes sin? Well, of course it isn't. When you go to, um, through to an airport and you have something in your um, suitcase that the x-ray machine shows up, maybe something you shouldn't have, say for instance, um, is it the x-ray machine for showing up what you shouldn't have in your suitcase? Or if you go to the hospital and um, you, you, have an X, you have a CT scan or some sort of a scan and it shows up an illness uh, within you, a disease within you, is it the CT scan's fault for showing up what is wrong? Of course not. In the same way Paul is saying, the law exposes our sin. The law's not bad. The law's not wrong. The law does a job that it was meant to do. God's law shows up the wrong that is in our lives. The second thing it shows is that he says is this, the law provokes my sin. So it kind of agitates it. He goes on in verses 8 to 9. Um, but sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of coveting. For apart from the law, Sin was dead once I was alive apart from law. But when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. So you, you get that picture. It kind of, it kind of um, the law agitated sin that was, was in, a, in, in Paul's life. And it's the same in your life and mine. Do you know what this is like? It's like if you go along the road and you see signs, 
You see signs, 40, 40 mile an hour signs or 60 mile an hour signs or no entry signs or you go into a building and say staff only signs. You, something in you and in me says, why should I? Or why should I not? I think the most challenging sign that I see is when I was used to um, uh, pre-lockdown days, going down to see our family down in Edinburgh, going down the um, the A9. And of course the A9 has been, parts of it are being um, uh, done up into dual carriageway. And there's these long, long stretches where, um, you know, you're normally doing 70 mile an hour. And these long stretches which were being, uh, are now being made into dual carriageway and, and it says you could only do 40 miles an hour. Well, that used to drive me crazy. And I have to confess, I would say 40. There's nobody here. And there's times when there's nobody else on the road. There's nobody here. There's no way I'm going to cause anybody any harm. So I would, I would do more than 40. Don't tell anybody I did that. But, but something in me, I mean, the law would say only do 40 for very good reason, probably. But I would do more than 40. Or, I don't know about you, but I would rationalise. I would say, so it says 60. And I would say, oh, say now, I think you're allowed 10% over 60. So I would do 66. Or 70, 10% over 70. If the cops stop me, I'll do just, they'll say, well, you didn't do more than 10% over 70. But there's something in us that provokes the law, whatever law it is, provokes something in us. Do you see that? Why should I? We rationalise. And that is exactly what Paul is saying that's exactly what the law of God does it's good but it agitates something within us so it exposes my sin it provokes my sin and then the law condemns my sin in verses 10 and 11 Paul says I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death um, so sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment deceived me and through the commandment put me to death. So the law condemns sin. Law breaking is condemned by God. And this is, I think this is the important verse in verse 13. Did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. The law is not, it doesn't produce death. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, as sin, it's, it used what is good to bring about death, my death, so that through the commandment, sin might be utterly sinful. All the law does is show me how sinful I am, that I am utterly sinful. It's not the problem, the law's not the problem, I'm the problem. My sin within me is the problem. And I think a really important verse in uh, the Bible that brings us to the fore is James chapter 2 and verses 8 to 11. James chapter 2 and verse 8 to 11 is a passage in the Bible which basically James says, if we break one law, we break every single one of them. We might think, but I'm not as bad as so and so. But James says, if we break one law, we break them all. Listen to what he says, James chapter 2. If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. And that is a summary of the second part of God's law. But then he goes on to say, But if you show favouritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. And this is the same thing. For whoever keeps the whole law, yet stumbles at just one point, just one point, is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not commit murder. If you do not commit murder, but do commit adultery, you have become a law breaker. So you see what James is saying? And you see what, what Paul is saying here? If we fall in just one part of any of God's laws, we break them all. And God then, by the law, condemns sin within us. It shows us what we truly are at heart. So the law exposes my sin. It provokes my sin. It condemns my sin. And finally, the law reveals my sin. Verses 12 down to verse 25. And this probably is the most complicated part of the passage. 
And so, although it is very complex, I think what this does is this passage reveals myself. The whole of the passage, this, these words, are, but the whole of the passage reveals who I am, this inner struggle that goes on. The good that I would do, I don't do. The evil that I don't do, that's what I end up doing. It reveals who I am. And that's what Paul drives home. And he drives home, of course, keeping to the law, keeping to the, the speed limit. He drives home that, that reality that he realized, that he experienced, that I realize, that I experience. And I think that you realize and you experience if we are to keep the whole of the law of God as we should do. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Try doing that. We cannot do it. We just cannot. But the passage ends in this brilliant note. Verse 24. What a wretched person I am. This law is holy, is righteous, is good. This law is not bad, it is good. This law is God's, God's, some, God's standard for us. And it, it condemns me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The law and my failure to obey the law actually shows me my need of Jesus. That is wonderful, good news. And we will go on next week into Romans chapter 8 to find out more of what this wonderful good news of Jesus Christ means for you and for me. I do hope and pray that you'll be able to join with us tomorrow for worship, online worship. Um, I plan to take the morning service at 11 o'clock and I will be looking at um, other particular situations where we should be reading our Bible. We should be reading our Bible all the time, but the Bible itself tells there are certain circumstances in which we should be reading our Bible. And then at 5 p.m., uh, Stuart will lead the evening worship, the evening together for Christ worship, as he continues through his uh, series on uh, Luke's Gospel. Do hope and pray you can join us. In the meantime, take care and God bless. And let me finish with a short word of prayer for us. And so, Father, thank you so much for this uh, great passage of the Bible. Truly, it is difficult, it is challenging, it is complex. But we thank you for that wonderful ending to the passage. What a wretched man I am. Who shall save me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that you're holy, righteous and good, and that you show us to be sinful, but you give to us a way to be righteous in your sight. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for kindness. And may we hold on to you as you hold on to us today and tomorrow. And for all of our lives, remind us, Father, we are in the grip of amazing grace. Bless you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care, friends, and God bless.